Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the President, Vice President, and Secretary of State attended the transfer of remains ceremony for the four Americans killed in Libya. While the White House welcomed Olympians and Paralympians, WNBA champions the Minnesota Lynx, new foreign ambassadors, and the Children's Miracle Network, that's September 14th to September 20th, or the dignity and freedom that every person deserves. On Friday, the White House got a little more athletic as the President, First Lady, and Vice President welcomed the 2012 U.S. Olympic and Paralympic teams to the South Lawn of the White House. Even more impressive than those medals is all the hard work that led up to that Olympic and Paralympic dream. This summer, people across the country, including some of the young people with us today, watched you compete and thought to themselves, you know what? If they can set a goal and work hard to reach it, maybe I can too. And maybe I can go a little farther and, and do a little better than people think I can. One of the great things about watching our Olympics is we are a portrait of what this country is all about. People from every walk of life, every background, every race, every faith. It sends a message to the world about what makes America special. And it's even more impressive when you think about the obstacles uh, that many of you have had to overcome, uh, not just to succeed at the games, but to get there in the first place. Later, the White House hosted a safety data palooza, highlighting innovators from the private, nonprofit, and academic sectors who have utilized freely available government data to build products, services, and even apps that advance public safety in creative and powerful ways. Like helping your family prepare for a hurricane or an earthquake and respond uh, faster and more effectively uh, in the event of a disaster. Uh, we, we've seen how uh, data could contribute to the, the fight against drunk driving, uh, how uh, data about uh, transportation, safety, and commutes uh, can be really made accessible to consumers. And it's just the beginning. On Friday afternoon, President Obama, Vice President Biden, and Secretary Clinton attended the transfer of remains ceremony at Andrews Air Force Base, which marked the return to the United States of the remains of the four brave Americans who were killed last week in Benghazi, Libya. That's the message these four patriots sent. That's the message that each of you sends every day. Civilians, military, to people in every corner of the world. That America is a friend, and that we care not just about our own country, not just about our own interests, but about theirs. That even as voices of suspicion and mistrust seek to divide countries and cultures from one another, the United States of America will never retreat from the world. We will never stop working for the dignity and freedom that every person deserves whatever their creed, whatever their faith. That's the essence of American leadership. That's the spirit that sets us apart from other nations. This was their work in Benghazi, and this is the work we will carry on. On Monday, the White House launched something yes, called Slash Developers. developers. It it's a one-stop resource for anyone who wants to use the tools provided by the White House Technology Program, including all the open data and open source software we've released so far. We hope you'll take a look at the data and applications. Crack them open and see how they work. Spot a problem? Have an idea for a new way to use that piece of data? We'd love to know. On Tuesday, the President welcomed the WNBA champion Minnesota Lynx to the White House to honor the team in their 2011 WNBA championship. In just one year, the Lynx went from worst to first bouncing back from the bottom of the standings to win the WNBA crown. They also managed to make the president look short. On Wednesday afternoon, foreign ambassadors recently posted in Washington arrived at the White House to mark the formal beginning of their service in Washington, representing the Republic of the Seychelles, the Union of Comoros, the Arab Republic of Egypt, the Oriental Republic of Uruguay, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, St. Lucia, the Republic of Colombia, the Slovak Republic, and the Hellenic Republic. Later, the President stopped by to say hello to the 52 amazing champions of the Children's Miracle Network hospitals, their families, and their national spokeswoman, Laura Kepler, the current Miss America. I just want to say how proud I am of all of you. You guys are all tough and strong 
and brave and smart and I know your parents could not be prouder of you. So I just want to let you know that we're proud of you too. And, and I'm so glad that I had a chance to visit you. One, two, three, cheese! At the end of the day, Nobel Peace Prize winner and Burmese opposition leader Aung San Suu Kyi arrived at the White House to meet with the president. It's her first trip to the United States in more than 20 years, marking the latest chapter in the life of a truly remarkable leader. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week.